the PT On Ice Daily Show. My name is Christina Previtt. I am one of the two lead faculty for modern management of the older adult. I teach the Jerry PT section of the ICE course availability with Dustin Jones. I hope you guys are having a wonderful beginning of the new year. I know this is probably the first week where everybody is back, starting to get back into a routine for better or for worse. And so I hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful vacation. Tonight, we are actually starting the next cohort of modern management of the older adult essential foundations. We have a cohort of 41 clinicians who are interested in better serving older adults, which is just incredible. And Dustin and I are honored that you guys are gonna take some of your continuing education money and invest it in us. If you guys are hoping to get onto our next cohort, um, it starts March 18th and the signup links are already there. This month, we start with our live courses as well again, and we are in Moline next weekend, the 18th, and then the weekend after that, the 24th, Alex and I are in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So it's gonna be a little bit warmer than my Canadian weather. Okay, so yesterday I was on the Virtual Ice uh, mentorship platform talking a little bit about Neuro Rehab 101. If you've been following some of my segment over the last several weeks, I've been diving into different neurological constructs, uh, looking at some of the neuroanatomical underpinnings of Parkinson's, looking at some of the efficacy of exercise trials, and talking a little bit about multiple sclerosis. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about early mobilization protocols. So as PTs, what we have seen is a fairly significant and welcome shift from trying to get people lying in bed and resting and recovering to getting them moving with intolerance, respecting healing as quickly as is anatomically or physiologically possible. An example is my dad actually, when he was 18, fractured his femur when he was playing football and he was in the hospital for six weeks in a traction device and was unable to move for the entire six weeks. Had to get all of his schoolwork done in the hospital. He was in correspondence with the school so that he could not fall behind in his grades because he had to stay in a bed in the hospital tractioning his leg after he broke his leg. Now, if we were to think about that, it would be almost crazy to think that that would be our protocol. And that's because we've been doing a lot of research on early mobilization. And so what we're starting to see now is that as much as we need to respect healing, we also want to start promoting recovery. And so from an orthopedic perspective, as long as usually fractures are stable and out of that first six weeks of callus formation that we're starting to get more active protocols, I'm also starting to see um, for some of my older adults who are in rotator cuff uh, arthroplasties or any sort of shoulder replacement that early mobilization is considered a paramount component to their recovery. And so another example that we see in the Jerry PT world is around uh, hip and knee replacements. So when we think about early mobilization, that's probably one of the biggest stepping stones that we've had over the last five to 10 years in regards to optimizing recovery after a joint replacement. Previously, um, to some of the research in early mobilization, what the typical protocol was, was that people would be in bed for several days to a week before any type of mobility work was started or initiated. And what could happen was, we know that people will lose up to 2% of muscle mass per day when, our, when they are on bed rest, which we do not want to try and encourage, especially in an older adult population where sarcopenia can be so detrimental. And stiffness can accumulate and scar tissue uh, breakdown is going to be that much more difficult to try and regain range of motion. And so early mobilization research studies were initiated in order to see if trying to get people up almost immediately once medically stable after replacement, if this is something that would be beneficial. And if you work in this population, you know that now the protocol is, if you have a knee replacement in the morning, the odds are if you are medically stable and coming off anesthesia well, they're gonna have you at least sitting on the edge of the bed that day 
if not trying to get you to transfer from bed to chair so that you're getting a little bit of standing. And in that way, you're able to be discharged from hospital. Oftentimes, some without complications in only a day or two, which for most people they appreciate because they would rather be recovering at home than sitting around in a hospital. So yesterday, my uh, virtual ICE lecture was on neuro rehabilitation. And so I kind of want to talk about another cohort where early mobilization may not be the way to go. So orthopedically, we kind of have this acceptance that we want to try and get people moving as quickly as possible after injury, that our bodies are resilient. But from a neurological perspective, is that the same? And so there is a study that was done and published in The Lancet in 2016, I believe, called the AVERT study. So it's a very early, oh, what's the acronym? I knew I was going to mess that up. So a very early uh, rehabilitation trial, AVERT, and looked at the uh, idea around increasing the amount of mobilization that a person would receive after stroke. So if anybody is working in a neurological population, especially for individuals who have had an acute stroke, you know that the sooner that a person gets to the hospital in order to either have an embolectomy to try and remove the clot from the brain, if there is a neurologist or neurosurgeon rather on a call that can get to the clot as quickly as possible, we can optimize outcomes, as well as using a tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, to try and break up that clot as quickly as possible. Because the idea is once there's been an occlusion in a blood vessel in the brain, the longer that the brain goes without blood flow, the more damage, the more extensive the damage is to the area and tissue around that emboli. And so we have some medical uh, protocols, including the embolectomies as well as the uh, TPA that we would initiate as soon as a person gets into the hospital, which is why there's been a huge public health outcry for knowing the acronym of FAST. So if people are experiencing facial paralysis, arm weakness, and speech slurring, then it's time to call uh, 911, and that's been blasted across a lot of public health platforms. And so if we have these early action steps when it comes to a person who has had a stroke, the question becomes, is this also true in regards to trying to get people to reestablish movement of whatever limb from a motor perspective has been affected by the stroke? So the idea would be if we can get people moving with their arms, starting to do bed mobility, getting up earlier rather than later, is that going to optimize outcomes and that's what this trial started, tried to do. So this was a huge undertaking. It had a thousand people in usual care and a thousand people in an early mobilization protocol. And the idea with this early mobilization protocol is that there would be at least an additional two touch points with a PT for a person who has had a stroke in the last 24 hours with the idea of trying to get them moving quickly. So for them, they had to be medically stable and um, able to obviously perform that early mobilization. But the idea was to have a PT in there two to three times to try and get them going from lying down to sitting, sitting to the edge of the bed, bed to transfer into chair and walking if possible. And so this study was done over several years. And what they showed was this early mobilization protocol, while being more um, expensive from a personnel perspective, actually was not more beneficial than the usual care paradigm, which is a slightly delayed initiation of mobilization. And not only that, but it could be potentially harmful. And so why do we think that that is the case? When we are having the initial, or the initial um, inflammatory cascade that happens after a stroke, which also is initiated when we're thinking about healing from an orthopedic injury, there's a certain amount of inflammation that occurs as well as swelling in the brain. The brain is encased in a skull, so it cannot just continue to swell, um, more like the skin can, which is a little bit more permeable. But what we also think is that these changes in position the brain in the very early period after a stroke is extremely vulnerable to changes in blood pressure, in particular 
uh, bottoming out of your blood pressure. So hypotension, especially ortho or orthostatically. So if we're trying to switch position, that drop in blood pressure can be negatively affecting our brain's ability to heal in the early period. Now, the difference between this, uh, this very early mobilization and usual care in terms of the potential detriment was less than 10%, but it was statistically significant. And there was definitely the power in this research study to be able to try and tease out some of those effects. And so the idea being that if we're going to put extra personnel on to try and get an early mobilization protocol that is not only not going to make a person better faster, but could potentially make them worse, that just doesn't make sense in terms of our decision making. And reflected from that, now there has been updated guidelines in the UK, Canada, and the US that recommend that mobilization post-stroke is not initiated until 24 to 36 hours after admission into hospital. And so in certain situations, mostly in the orthopedic realm, we're starting to see that early mobilization and movement of a limb is going to mitigate muscular loss and retain strength and physical resiliency as much as possible given the state of an injury. But neurologically, that may not be the case. And Although we do want to try and start optimizing recovery, we know that we have a six month window for optimizing neurological recovery. We want to make sure that we're respecting the body's healing process and initiating that recovery when the body is ready to do so. Alrighty, that is my Jerry on Ice for today. I hope you guys found that helpful. I know that a lot of people listening to the podcast are, are orthopedic therapists, but I think that we need to brush up on some of our neuro as well. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments about that, I like to geek out about some of these research studies because I think it's really interesting that we're pushing our thinking and although we want to kind of generalize early mobilization as something that is beneficial, that there are going to be certain instances and circumstances where that may not necessarily be the most advantageous or we're not advocating on the side of the client to improve their functional resiliency as quickly as possible. So. We are done for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week that you're getting back into the grind, back into your work routine well. And if you guys have any questions about modern management of the older adult essential foundations or advanced concepts, because our first cohort for there starts March 11th. So advanced concepts starts March 11th. Our next online cohort of modern management of the older adult essential foundations starts on the 18th. And we would love for you to join us in either. All right, have a great day, everyone. Talk soon. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.